Home in Isolation, The Schindler House by Kristen Santamaria. R.M. Schindler lived and studied architecture in Vienna in the early 1900s. According to Robert Sweeney and Judith Sheen in their book Schindler, King's Road, and Southern California Modernism, in Vienna, Schindler studied in the school under Otto Wagner, as a member of Wagner's last class prior to his retirement in 1910. During that time, Schindler also began attending lectures by Adolf Luce and was greatly influenced by him during the Industrial Revolution. James Steele mentions in his book R.M. Schindler the way that mentor Adolf Luce saw, quote, the true dilemma created by the Industrial Revolution. It caused an irreparable separation from the vernacular community, forcing entire towns to relocate to the city in order to survive when cottage industries could not economically compete with the mills. Luce accepted the alienation that resulted from this, quote, migration to the cities, end quote, and responded to the way external features of a building convey its status. He advocated for not having status expressed on the outside of a building or house. Therefore, the inside of a house took on importance to combat that isolation and reinforce a person's heritage. The importance of the inside of a home can be seen in Schindler's work and in the house Schindler would eventually create in California in the early 1920s. Schindler left Vienna at a time right before the start of World War I. As a result, one could argue that he was not affected by the destruction and atmosphere that his contemporaries face, who stayed in Vienna. According to Sweeney and Sheen, he left Vienna to move to Chicago, stopping in New York on his way. He worked for Ottenheimer, Stern, and Reichert when he first moved to Chicago, but eventually ended up working for Franklin Lloyd Wright, which seemed to be his ultimate goal. He began officially working for Wright in 1917. He was in charge of Wright's office while Wright was absent, attending to projects outside of the country. According to Sweeney and Sheen, Schindler met his wife, Sophie Pauline Gibling, in 1919 and married her after three months. She had the activist spirit, and they were both considered communists. Pauline's activism and related social activities would greatly influence their approach to the house they would later create and build together, as it would become a place to hold meetings and social gatherings. Schindler came to Los Angeles in 1920 to supervise the Barnes Doll House, located on Olive Hill. Steele expresses that Schindler quickly responded to the climate and culture of California. In 1921, he and his wife Pauline were on a two-week vacation in Yosemite when they were, quote, intrigued by the idea of creating a house that would be as open to nature as a tent, end quote. This emphasis on openness and nature would influence his approach to his own home. The Schindlers decided to construct a home to be co-inhabited by their friends the Chases. According to Steele, Pauline Schindler and Marion Chase had been friends at Smith College. Clyde Chase worked for Irving Gill as a contractor. He was also an engineer. You can see from this first floor plan the overall idea of the house. The house was divided into three overall sections. The Schindlers were on the north side, the Chases were on the south side, and then there was a guest house that made up a third component of the house. Um, the, the Chases and the um, Schindlers each had L-shaped wings on opposite sides uh, with fireplaces, and then there was a large garden to the west.
Based on letters that the Schindlers wrote to Pauline's family, as Quoden and Steele, each person was supposed to have their own room. That means that um, the house would be comprised of four rooms with two shared kitchen spaces and then an additional guest area. The cooking would occur on the table in a quote, social campfire affair, end quote. There would be large studio rooms that have concrete walls on three sides and a front that is open to the outdoors. The roof would have two, quote, sleeping baskets, end quote, where people could sleep open to the air, but where there would be a cover for protection in case it rained. The house has a natural quality to it, seemingly blending in with its natural surroundings. These two pictures were taken of the inside and then the outside of the house in the 1920s. Quote, structurally, the house is a combination of the concrete wall slabs and a simple post and beam system, end quote. The house was constructed using the slab tilt method, quote, in which reinforced concrete wall units cast on the concrete slab floor were hoisted into position using a tripod, block, and tackle. The woodwork concrete walls and glass walls make the outdoor and indoor world come together. Gradually, as pointed out by James Steele, the couples living with the Schindlers left the house. The Chase family left the house in 1925. Then Richard and Dion Nutra occupied it, but they also ended up moving out to Europe in 1930 and then they did not occupy the house when they got back. They originally had decided to form an architectural partnership in 1925, but that partnership eventually fell apart. What began as a place to be co-inhabited ended up changing its main purpose as people left the house and the Schindlers eventually divorced. Steele points out the way financial stability took a toll on the marriage. Pauline and her son Mark left the house in 1927 and moved to Carmel. Schindler turned the Chase's area into a rental unit until Pauline eventually moved back to the house in 1938 to start divorce proceedings. The interesting part about her moving back in was that she lived in the Chase's area while Schindler lived in his own area until he died in August 22, 1953. I find this particular part of the narrative to be very interesting. I've created two short works that deal with each idea, one with the idea that the house is a social gathering, the other with the idea that the house became a place of isolation and separation. I centered both stories around the idea of the fireplace. Paul Ricoeur says in Architecture and Narrativity that, quote, places are points where something happens, where something comes to be, where temporal changes follow actual paths along the intervals that separate and reconnect the places, end quote. What if we could connect these places through time? What if we could understand how a place could serve to both bring people together and keep them apart? The Schindler House has fireplaces both inside and outside of the house. Fireplaces can not only serve to keep you warm, but they also act as a place to bring together family and friends. First Narrative The sound of people talking filled the cool autumn air. The sound like water bubbling under the surface seemed to come from all different corners. The velvet light from the fire shifted through the sliding glass door, blending the reflection of color off the glass. A loud laugh from inside pierced the air. Standing outside, staring at the sky as late afternoon light faded through the branches on the tree, I gazed into the fire as waves seemed to move back and forth. Someone touched my shoulder and drew me back into the conversation. Like the previous days, which seemed to blend in, we spoke about the candidate we were passionate about, the one we thought would make a difference, would make a change. We seemed to speak for hours, our own little pocket of the courtyard, our own little portion of our world. Other people were around me, 
I'm sure they also spoke passionately too, as the fire gently moved in the background. In the Poetics of Space, Gaston Bachelard writes, quote, In the life of a man, the house thrusts aside contingencies. Its counsels of continuity are unceasing. Without it, man would be a dispersed being. It maintains him through the storms of the heavens and through those of life. It is body and soul. It is the human being's first world, end quote. The home becomes the, quote, first world, end quote, of the person, Changes to that world would lead to ripples, modifying the purpose of the home, the purpose of the world. Narrative 2. The fire was banked. You could see the blackness coming out from the fireplace, but no warmth permeated out of it. The only light came reflected off the copper on the top of the fireplace. The light played tricks with my eyes, making me see something that wasn't there. The room was quiet. I did not even want to whisper. It was the kind of quiet that felt like a sense of its own. My own thoughts sliced through the room, those thoughts the only other occupant. I walked into the kitchen. I should make something. I should do something. I should be someone the concrete floor cool on my bare feet. Rows of glasses were stacked neatly in the cabinet. I took one down for myself and placed it empty on the table. Somewhere, in another room, another world, I wondered if he was doing the same. The idea of a home is something that will mean different things to different people, but a home might all be in our definition of it, and in the relationships we build in the places and spaces we consider to be our homes. Perhaps there is a place for both coming together and being isolated in any home, and the home acts to represent the people within it as a reflection and as a mirror. The Schindler House is a place where narratives come together. It is no surprise then that the MAK Center for Art and Architecture is currently located at the Schindler House. The center holds many art installations and since 1994 the center has been making sure to promote the house and work of R.M. Schindler. <laughs>